Intel Core i7-6950X Broadwell E and Asus X99 Deluxe to review. While the PC industry as a whole is shrinking and tech companies seem focused either on thinner, lighter devices or pushing prices down at any cost, there's a tiny sliver of the market that doesn't care for either of these things. This is the power user segment, and this is where you look when you want the absolute best performance possible, and when money is no object. Such products aren't always easy to find, especially in India, and they exist well beyond the usual scale of most people's budgets. This kind of hardware is aimed primarily at those who have seriously heavy workloads. The difference between ordinary and extreme hardware can mean a lot in terms of time saved when you have tons of 3D visualizations or 4K video to render, for example. Plenty of gamers also want the best possible experience. Besides them, there are overclockers who want to break records and of course a fair number of buyers who are in it solely for the bragging rights. Intel caters to such folk with its Extreme Edition Core i7 CPUs and X-Series platform controllers, around which industry partners manufacture motherboards. We have with us today Intel's recently launched Core i7-6950X, its absolute top-end consumer CPU, and a befittingly expensive motherboard, the Asus X99 Deluxe 2. Intel uses the relatively tame-sounding name high-end desktop processors and there's nothing in their model numbers that makes these CPUs stand out from the rest of the lineup. They seem to slot right in with the regular Core i3, i5, and i7 CPUs, but they're completely different. Each generation is based on a souped-up version of the previous mainstream architecture, more closely related to Xeon server chips. While everything in the 6th generation portfolio up to the Core i7-6700K is codenamed Skylake, the Core i7-6800K and above are codenamed Broadwell E. Only one standout star, the Core i7-6950X, has that distinct text and the Extreme Edition tag on its name. Broadwell of course is Intel's codename for the 5th generation Core series, which was developed primarily for laptops and portable devices the company pretty much skipped a generation between Haswell and Skylake for desktops. Broadwell was the first of Intel's architectures to be manufactured at the 14 nanometers process node, down from 22 nanometers. While the mainstream Core i7s top out at 4 cores, previous extreme editions have gone up to 6 and 8. With the new Core i7-6950X, Intel has gone ahead and introduced the world's first 10-core desktop PC processor. Thanks to the hyper-threading feature, this means you get 20 simultaneous threads for all your complex multitasking needs. However, you'll pay a lot for that privilege, the new CPU is listed at Rs. 1,69,000. We're seeing it sell for around Rs. 1,32,000 online but that's still an awful lot compared to last year's flagship, the Core i7-5960X, which goes for around Rs. 80,000. Below this model slots the Octa-Core i7-6900K and the Hexa-Core i7-6850K and i7-6800K. There's 2.5 MB of cache per core, so the i7-6950X gets 25 MB in total while the i7-6800K gets 15 MB total. All four support DDR4 RAM and are rated for 140 watts of power draw. They all need a motherboard based on an Intel X99 platform controller and I'll use the, the LG A2011 V3 socket. Prices start at Rs. 44,000, Rs. 34,500 retail, and scale up dramatically from there. However, there's one particular oddity about the lowest end i7-6800K model which makes it seem like less of a bargain, while all the others can handle up to 40 key 3.0 lanes for high-speed communication with other hardware such as GPUs and USB controllers. This one has only 28 lanes available to it. Because of power and thermal constraints, the 10 core i7-6950X has a base clock of 3.0 GHz and can turbo boost up to 3.5 GHz, whereas the 6 core i7-6850K has a base of 3.6 GHz which can go up to 3.8 GHz, the highest of the lineup. What's interesting here is that Intel's new Turbo Boost Max 3.0 feature pulls each individual CPU constantly as it is running to determine which of its cores is the strongest at any point of time, so that single-threaded applications can be forced to run on that particular core at up to 4.0 GHz. This happens transparently in the background, and can change depending on workload and operating conditions. 
Intel says that Turbo Boost Max 3.0 can result in significant spikes in performance as and when required, which allows work to happen faster in cases when software is not optimized for multiple CPU cores. Single-threaded workloads could benefit from this, especially since the top clock speed is lower with more cores. You'll need Windows 10 and a specific driver from Intel to enable this feature. As opposed to the rest of Intel's consumer lineup, all of Intel's high-end desktop CPUs lack any integrated graphics capability. The assumption is that you're going to use a powerful discrete graphics card anyway. Similarly, you don't get a cooler in the box along with the chip itself, since there's no point letting a stock cooler go to waste. A lot of buyers will want a liquid cooling solution, but whatever your choice, you have to buy it yourself. So what do you get when you spend so much on a Broadwell eCPU? One factor is of course the raw power for single and multi-threaded applications. On top of that, you get to move from dual-channel DDR4-2133 RAM to quad-channel DDR4-2400. However, the main attraction by far is all those extra PCIe lanes, which are necessary for multi-GPU configurations. You only get 16 lanes with the Core i7-6700K, so if you want more than two graphics cards at full speed, you'll need this platform. This might not be such a big draw now that NVIDIA has pretty much killed SLI, but it remains the only option, and we'll soon see interesting multi-vendor, multi-GPU combinations thanks to DirectX 12. Those lanes can also be used for multiple high-speed NVMe SSDs, USB 3.1, and Thunderbolt controllers, 10 gigabit Ethernet, and more. <laughs>